for an absolute anointing in the name of Jesus to cover Cleve right now from head to toe. Let it be so thick that he can sense it. Sense your healing touch right now. And be with Kathy, Lord Jesus. Just give this precious couple extra grace and strength right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and we give you the glory. I don't know if I can make it up there, man. Hey, good. How are you doing?
glad that you're here. Uh, it's good to see you all, and uh, I believe we're in for great service this morning. Uh, I've got a couple of announcements uh, that, that I'd like to make. Of course, a uh, prayer meeting is Thursday nights at, at 6.30. You guys come out for that. We'll, we'll be having it uh, again this Thursday. Uh, and then we're starting the a midweek service on February the 5th. That'll be Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. How's Larry doing? He is. Well, he gets around, don't he? I know, for an old man, yeah. Well, tell him we miss him. Uh, the midweek service will start Wednesdays, February the 5th. Uh, at 6.30 p.m., and it's adding that extra touch point throughout the week to where you can stay encouraged and strengthened and refreshed. It'll, it'll, be, a, it'll be a service. It'll be more casual than, than typically a Sunday morning is. We'll have prayers, testimonies, a uh, lesson. Uh, we'll be partaking of the table, the Lord's Supper, communion. So, uh, again, that's not this Wednesday. I believe it'll start the following Wednesday. So, uh, make sure you come out for that. And, uh, uh, of course, you know, over the past three weeks, we've been doing the three questions. What do you wonder about? What do you worry about? What do you wish for? We've collected all that data, uh, and, and we've grouped it together in certain themes, and uh, we'll be able to share with you next week the results of that. We're going to chart it out and everything. Uh, but uh, we're going to start this week with one of the questions that was asked, and and certain themes are more common uh, than others. There's a lot that was very frequent, talking about uh, salvation for family, for salvation for loved ones, uh, and, and forgiveness, which is what we're going to talk about this morning, addiction. There's a lot of different things. And so these are really, really neat responses, and it helps to kind of set the course for, for what we're going to preach over the next uh, several weeks. And so uh, I believe you'll be... Uh, blessed by that, uh, and so I've actually got the results in, in the office back there. I can uh, share them with you privately if you'd want to, or next week we're just going to disseminate all that information, but I don't know anybody's responses. Nobody put their, I don't know any, but any of the comments, I don't know who put what, and so for whoever put, is it, or, uh, can you smoke marijuana and still be a Christian? I don't know who said that, uh, but, but it's a great question. Mark did. Mark just owned up to it. Uh, <laughs> but that's a great question, you know, this, uh, there, there's a lot of good, good questions in there, uh, for, ranging from everything, guys, from, and it's, it's really good, it's really, really good. So, I want to open up uh, service this morning. Of course, uh, the, the, the sermon this morning is about forgiveness, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak more on that in just a moment uh, when it comes time for the sermon, but I want to open up with uh, Psalm 51 which is uh, kind of the, the pinnacle for forgiveness and repentance. And this is David's uh, psalm or prayer of confession and repentance after he had committed a great sin. And, and this is what he said, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And he goes on to say, Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. And restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. And then he goes on and concludes, For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with the burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. And so this morning, you may have a broken and contrite heart. You may have went through some tough things, but this is where you're renewed, at the feet of Jesus, at the throne of of grace and scripture encourages us to when we have failed, when we have messed up, and we have this week, right? There's sins of omission, sins of commission, things that you did that you shouldn't have done, things that you should have done that you didn't do, and we're all guilty, but we come to a gracious Savior, a merciful God that is saying to us this morning, Come to me, and He's going to wash us from our sins and cleanse us. 
And when we enter and turn to God and enter into His presence, notice that there's the joy of salvation. That, guys, is the key. That is our strength. That joy that is in the salvation of the Lord. So be encouraged this morning. Be strengthened because God is near. Let us pray. Father, we thank You so much for Your presence. Lord, we just pray that just a mighty outpouring happened this morning, Lord, that, that we need You, Jesus, and, and we can't go through this life on our own, in our own strength, Father, but we pray that You just pour out Your Spirit upon us. We pray that You cleanse us and forgive us, Lord, of our sins, and then, Father, allow us to forgive others. Give us grace this morning to extend forgiveness to our brothers and to our sisters, Lord Jesus. And Father, this morning as we worship You, may Your name be holy in this place. Jesus, allow us to worship You in spirit and in truth to exalt You and be present within our, our praise and the words that we sing and, and the words that we speak, Lord Jesus. We love You, Father. We love You so much. Cleanse us, purge us, purify us, renew us, and strengthen us with the joy of Your salvation. For you are a good, loving, merciful Father. And Lord, we pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning. It's been a while since we have done prayer requests or praise reports, so it feels good yeah. to be up here this morning to be able to... to uh, bring our requests before the Lord. So do we have um, prayer requests this morning? Okay. 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 Robert and Pauline Morrison. Okay. <coughs> Okay. Conley. Okay. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> okay. 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 Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just uh, come before you this morning. We're just thankful that we are here this morning in your house to worship you and with our church family. And um, Father, we know that you want us to bring our burdens and our cares to you. And so, Father, that's what we're doing this morning. Father, we're going to lay these concerns and, and burdens at your feet. Father, we just lift up um, um, Conley. Um, uh, the unspoken requests. Uh, we pray for Philip as he is looking for a job. We lift up Robert and Pauline Morrison, um, our brother Cleve, um, Allison, uh, the family of uh, Judy Keltner, um, Larry Tungett, and then we also pray for uh, Roger, Amanda's dad, and um, his uh, situation with his heart. And, uh, and then also, Father, we just praise you this morning for uh, Nina's brother, that he is doing well. We just pray for good news from the pathology report and that 
he just have a complete healing and restoration. So, Father, we just give these to you this morning, and we just ask for your will in all of these situations. And, and um, Father, we know that even when we don't see you, like the song says, we know that you're working. And so, Father, we just thank you for that, and just thank you for this church. We thank you for this day and for our pastor and our worship leaders in song. And, Father, we just ask that you just be with us during this service, that your Holy Spirit just come and, and fill us up, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Bless him, Jesus. <coughs> you can stand, uh, would you stand with us this morning and, and worship? God's seen us through another week, and he's so good to us, he deserves all of our praise, all of our worship this morning. And so this song is, is very old, and, and I've sang it a dozen times, but it's, it's so simple, but it says so much. It's just thanking the Lord for, for saving us, for making us whole, and, and just proclaiming our love for Jesus. So you should know it by now, I think. So just sing along with us, and let's give God some praise. Thank you, Lord, for saving my Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me the great salvation so full and so Loved me 
because he first loved me so thank you Lord for saving my soul and thank you Lord for making
have your way in me. Oh, man. 
There is no one like you. Jesus, you're beautiful. There is no one quite like you, Lord. Oh, there is no one above you, Jesus. Jesus, you're beautiful, Lord. Oh, we give you all the praise this morning. Oh, we give you all our praise this morning. You're worthy. Oh, and you're so beautiful, Jesus. You're all together, lovely Jesus. You're all together, worthy Lord. Jesus, you're beautiful. beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. You are the King of all kings, Lord of all lords. No the book of Revelation describes what you are. No one beside Your you. eyes are like a flame of fire. Your hair is like wool. Your spirit is like waters. Your voice, Lord. We don't live by bread alone, but your voice. And we hear you today. We hear you. That you want to make a home upon your people. You want to come and rest upon us, not just in us. Because when the heavens opened, the Spirit of God rested upon Jesus. For those who are baptized, the Spirit can rest on us. So I pray that you will rest on all of us for the sake of each other. Rest on us. Pray that as Jason comes and ministers to our hearts and our souls, I pray that your spirit will rest on him for our sake, that we will be touched by your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you so much. Jesus, we thank you. You fill us with your grace and with your presence. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here this morning. We thank you for touching our hearts and filling us with your presence and with your spirit, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We love you and we worship you, Lord Jesus. You are beautiful, Lord. Your eyes are like flames of fire and your hair like wool and your voice like waters, Lord Jesus. And this morning, Father, I pray that uh, we abide, We you enable us to abide right here in your presence, Lord Jesus. And And give us a glimpse of you this morning, Father, even as we are sitting in the pews, Lord, with our with our eyes closed, Father, we pray that that you would give us a glimpse of your beauty, Lord Jesus, of your radiance and of your light, Lord, which penetrates the darkness, which uh, breaks apart the heart of stone, Lord Jesus, melt our hearts this morning by the power of your spirit, Lord, anoint me to preach this word on 
forgiveness, Lord, which is at the core of what it means to follow you, Lord Jesus. Allow there to not be any distractions or burdens or hindrances upon the proclamation of your word, Lord Jesus. Get me out of the way and speak to your people this morning, Lord. There's some of us that are holding on to some things that will send us to eternal damnation, Lord. And Father, I pray right now that those things are broken off of hearts, that that unforgiveness is broken off of lives, that resentment shall tuck tail and run out of here this morning, Lord Jesus, that the power of your Holy Spirit will break us free from those chains of unforgiveness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 45. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Then Joseph could not control himself before all those who stood by him. He, he cried, make everyone go out from me. So no one stayed with him when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept aloud so that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But... His brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed at his presence. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near, and he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are yet five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. Here's the question. On the responses that you filled out, here's the question. I wish to know how to not hold grudges. And I don't know who submitted this, so don't worry, I have no idea. And neither does the secretary, Regina, nobody does. The Holy Spirit does. And I believe you're speaking for many, whoever wrote this. I wish to know how to not hold grudges, to stop building walls, to protect myself from being hurt. And I struggle with being able to forgive easily. This chapter here is a prime illustration of human forgiveness. What's going on, Joseph... Uh, had been sold into slavery by his, his brothers, and, and we'll get into that in just a moment. He'd been in Egypt for 20 some, some years, and now we pick up the storyline when his brothers are brought near in a famine. They're looking for food. They don't realize that it's Joseph, and where the story picks up, Joseph says, everybody out but my brothers, and then they begin to realize that this was their younger brother whom they'd sold, they were going to kill, they threw him in a pit, and they sold him into slavery. And Joseph is uh, filled with, as we see, not rage, not anger, but forgiveness. He had every right to be angry, but he was not. There's a lot of people in the world today that, that are filled with anger uh, because they've never experienced forgiveness and, and they don't, uh, they've never experienced forgiveness and therefore they never extend it to others and, and they're shackled by unforgiveness. They're shackled by resentment and hatred and hostility and they can't seem to break free from it and they don't even possibly realize it and they are trapped in a world of unforgiveness. At the core, guys, forgiveness is a spiritual dimension. If you were to take a blank sheet of paper, fold it in half, and write two phrases, one on each side. Each phrase is three words. And if I were to ask you what are the toughest three words, two phrases that you could possibly write down and express, I guarantee that many of us would say this. It's most difficult to write down and say, I am sorry. On the other side, I forgive you. 
It's just the reality of it. Why? Why is it so hard? Because pride has a stranglehold on us, right? Pride consumes us. Pride absolutely uh, disallows us to come to the point of vulnerability and say, I forgive you. We want to hold on to that edge that we have over somebody uh, against that person that, that mistreated us, that cheated us of money, that absolutely ridiculed our name, and we've got this edge over them. As long as we say, no, I'm not going to say, I forgive you, we can keep holding it over their head. We're not as humble as we say we are. We're not as humble as we think we are. We're full of pride and, and resentment and grudges that we're holding around. And what's the solution? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the solution. It's the heart of being a Christian. And three things I'd like to look at this morning is the illustration and explanation and the application. The illustration of forgiveness, the explanation of forgiveness, and the application of forgiveness. How do we make it real? And so to pick up first the illustration, uh, going back to Genesis 37, the story of Joseph and his brothers, and they hated him. Look, Joseph's brothers were full of jealousy, right? Their father loved Joseph, gave him a coat, a beautiful coat of many colors, and they didn't despise that. They didn't like little Joseph. He was their father's favorite, it seemed like. And jealousy began to swell up in their hearts. Have you been there? And so they despise and, and they connive this plan to get Joseph. Genesis 37 says this, verse 17 to 18. And the man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. So here's Joseph going after his brothers that he loves. He has no idea that they hate him. They want to kill him. And so here he's running to catch up to his dear brothers. They saw him from afar. Oh, here comes Joseph. And before he came near to him, they conspired to kill him. You may have had some brothers or sisters you don't like, but I doubt you had it this bad. Verse 19, 20, they said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Here comes the dreamer. And they say, come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then they will say that a fierce animal has devoured him and we will see what will become of his dreams. Has anybody ever said that about you? You're the dreamer. If somebody wants to get rid of your dreams, they want to extinguish you. And we see Joseph's brothers here, they conspired and, and they didn't kill him. They threw him into a pit. Verse 28 of chapter 37 of Genesis says this, Then Midianite traders passed by and they drew Joseph, Joseph up and, and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. There he is. Left for dead, sold into slavery. He would spend 20 plus years in a, in a foreign land all because of jealousy. Now, fast forward 23 years and Joseph is there. His brothers had done, threw him into a pit, had done, uh, told his father that he was dead. Famine sweeps the land. There's no food. They're about to die. And they go down into Egypt because they hear that there's a ruler down there that has some food. And so they show up and here's this guy dis dis dispersing food and, and Joseph recognizes that these are his brothers that despise the dreamer and there's people all around and Joseph says everybody out what's going to happen this is his chance Greg this is his chance to get even with those brothers that, that, that wanted to kill him and absolutely wanted to wipe him off of this earth to get rid of his dreams here's his chance get even. Public spectacle, public humiliation, this is his chance. How does he respond? Look what he did. Joseph had his coat of many colors stripped from him and taken from him. What does Joseph do? He gives his brothers his clothes. 
He gives them clothes so that they can wear. And what happened to Joseph? He had all of his money taken away from him by his brothers. He was robbed. But what does he do in this instance? He gives his brothers money. His brothers drove him away. They said, get away from this land. They drove him away. What does Joseph do? He says, come close to me. Come close to me. This is the heart of forgiveness. This is an illustration of what it means to have a forgiving heart. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes. That's what you're to do as you read Scripture. Scripture shines a light on each and every one of us. This is a forgiving heart. Come close to me. Look at verse 4. So Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me, please. And they came near and he said, I'm your brother Joseph whom you sold into Egypt. And you got to think that, man, maybe they were afraid. There they're standing. And Joseph says, come near. And you got to admit there's some trepidation. They probably thought, wow, we better not go close to this guy. He's going to kill us. He's going to chop our heads off. But they come near and what happens? When they get close, he comforts them. He speaks to them with compassion and and he talks with them, he clothes them, he weeps with them, and he embraces them. This is a forgiving heart that we see, and this is dramatic, and this is a living illustration, guys, of what Jesus taught us. Paul, quoting Jesus in Romans chapter 12, verses 19 to 21, says this, Beloved, never avenge yourselves. Leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Verse 20, to the contrary. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Guys, this is a revolution. This is a revolution. This is radical. It's this type of love and forgiveness that changes lives, that absolutely brings about reconciliation and restoration and health. This is a forgiving heart. What if we really started living this way? Guys, what if we really started carrying this out and living this way in everything that we do? If we had this this heart of forgiveness, right? If we had this heart of reconciliation, what about if we opened up our homes to those who are struggling and hurting? What about if we didn't pick up the mantle of gossiping and backbiting, but instead moved toward dialogue and conversation and love and restoration? What would our lives look like? When we have every right to take up the yoke of vengeance and to swipe low our adversaries and we don't do it but instead we lay down the acts of hostility and we move toward them in grace and compassion and reconciliation. What would our lives look like? What would our church look like? Ask yourselves this. Overcome evil with good. So this is a tangible illustration of forgiveness. Second, this is the explanation. Listen to me close. The message here is not this. It's not, okay, forgive and and go on and and things will be good with you. And so you come to church and, and the entire message is about... Do this, don't do that, right? Do this, don't do that. It's all about uh, external behavior. And there's churches all around that say that, right? That if you do this, then it'll be well with you. That's not the message here. Why? Because none of us can do this. We can say we do it, right? We can say we can put on a good smile and we can say pleasant and nice things and we check mark, yeah, we're supposed to forgive. What about that person that did you some bad 20 years ago? You can say you forgive, but you walk out of here and if there's not been a heart change, you don't have the power to forgive. We can't do it on our own, guys. This is not 
a message about, yes, you should forgive, so you externally do it. This is not behavior modification. This is not moralism. This is talking about a power that we all need to enable us to have hearts of forgiveness, to enable our hearts to be softened and to move towards other with forgiveness and reconciliation. We need another power. And Jesus in Matthew 18 says this, right, talking to Peter. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times. So you can picture Peter here with the checklist. Okay, I've forgiven him once and then he got me. Shame on me once, twice, shame on you or something like that. Twice you've done it again. A third time you've done it again. Oh boy, you're getting into the hot water. We're on number six. Number seven, you're out. Peter thinks he has him. But Jesus, the kind, gracious, uh, compassionate one, turns it and he says to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. Or seven being the number of perfection, ten being the number of completeness. This is an absolute call and message that forgiveness is a matter of the heart. And you keep forgiving. You can't even count how many times you're supposed to forgive. Right? It's about a complete and absolute posture of the heart towards forgiveness. Always take the checklist out in front of you. Don't count the times. But you're always to forgive and to move forward. That's the message. Forgiveness is a heart matter. The lesson here is that we are prompted, sinners prompted by, by gratitude. The forgiven sinner must always do everything in their power to forgive those who have offended them. If you're taking notes, I've got, this won't be on the PowerPoint, but real quickly, there's seven key takeaways or seven steps underneath this lesson about the explanation of forgiveness. And the first is this. Number one, this is about forgiveness. Remember this, guys. Key in right here. Number one, we are all debtors to God. Romans 3.23 says this, that we all are indebted to God. Number two, none of us is able to repay either our own debt or the debt of our brothers and sisters. We owe God a debt that we cannot pay, cannot pay in our own accord, cannot pay for anybody else. We are all debtors, right? Are you with me? Got it? We're all debtors. We cannot pay. We can, I cannot pay my own debt regardless of what I do, regardless of how much money I put in the offering plate. I can't pay your debt no matter how much I love you. Are we clear? We can't do it. Number three. By means of Christ's atoning sacrifice, the debt has been paid for all who believe in Him. By the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross, our debt has been paid for everybody that turns to Him and believes in Him. That's number three. Number four. We can know we've been forgiven when we are eager to forgive others. You know we've been forgiven when we are eager to forgive others. Number five, we should be willing to forgive others because we've been forgiven by God. And, and we've been forgiven by God more by, for more than anything than any man owes to us. Number six, the unforgiving person is destined for everlasting punishment. The Bible is clear about this, folks. The Bible's clear about this. You cannot carry any unforgiveness in you toward anybody else. No matter how bad they mistreated you, you've got to forgive them. And, and remember the baseline for this is because God has forgiven you of so much that, that we cannot hold anything against anybody else. Your debt was so great, Christ died for you. And on the basis of that forgiveness, He has wiped away all of your debt. Therefore, you go out, you don't hold anything against anybody, right? You don't hold any grudges or resentment against anyone because you've been forgiven of anything greater than what they can uh, be indebted to you. Last, number seven, when someone asks who should take the first step in reconciliation, the offender or the offended, the answer is both. Both the offender and the offended. 
One of the proofs that we have a softened heart is that we have a forgiving spirit toward others. And finally, how do we apply this? Number three, the application. And I'd like for you all to, to absolutely allow the Holy Spirit to move in your hearts this morning. I've got two questions to present to you, right? Two questions to be answered by you. And the first is this. Have you ever come to God and acknowledged the enormity of your sin? Have you ever come to God and acknowledged the severity of your sin? Have you honestly ever come to God and bowed the knee before King Jesus, admitted that you're a sinner and that you need His marvelous grace? Pretend right now there's not another person in this building. It's just you and God. This question, allow it to land where it may. Have you ever come to God honestly? And I'm not asking if you've been in church 23, 25, 30 years. I'm asking you, have you went to God and said, I admit I'm a sinner? Don't be stiff-necked. Don't be a master of deception. You're not deceiving anybody. Or you might be, you might even be deceiving yourself, but you will not deceive God. This is an honest question. God knows your heart. Have you ever cried out this prayer? And if you have, I thank God for it. We're on this journey together. But if you haven't, you can, you can cry out now. You can cry out now. Romans says that if we believe in Christ and confess Him with our mouths, we will be saved. Now is the day to pray this prayer. God, save me. I admit that I'm a sinner. Save me, God. Believe, trust, and confess. Second question is this. You have acknowledged to God that your sins are great and you've placed your trust in Jesus Christ. Do you take seriously the issue of forgiving other people? Do you take this seriously? Or do you think you'll just get a pass because God understands? Guys, revenge is not a healthy thing, and, and forgiveness is not just a, a one-time thing. This is a turning of the heart, a constant application. And, and when we remember these things, right, that these people did, we continue to have this, uh, this posture of forgiveness. It's not a one-time thing, and we're done with it. We continually offer forgiveness. We continually receive forgiveness. It's a pressing in. It's a lifestyle. And I pray that the Holy Spirit enable us to cultivate this lifestyle of forgiveness because if not it will destroy us right resentment is at the heart of murder resentment is why uh, there's so much suicide and homicide where does resentment come from unforgiveness so do not allow unforgiveness and resentment to take root in your heart don't give the devil a foothold ask yourself this morning guys do you seriously forgive others I'd like to ask our worship team to come to their instruments and prepare this final song. We're all called to be part, listen, we're all called to be part of a revolution, not based, I mean, this is a revolution not based upon how we dress, this is a revolution not based upon how we talk or how well we sing or how nice our church looks. This is a revolution built and based on love. You're part of it. This is countercultural. When culture is offended by everything, every little sentence that comes out, every little image that comes out, everybody's offended at something. You are called to be and to lead a revolution. You are called to walk in love and forgiveness. What does Scripture say about how you know the disciples of Jesus Christ? John 13, 35 says this, by this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Do you have love for one another? Do you have God-given love? I'm not talking about an emotional goosebump type of love. I'm not talking about a, a, a shallow love. I'm talking about a love in which you would die for another person. A love in which you'd give the coat off of your back to another person. 
Or do you feel entitled to hold on to your resentment and grudge? Guys, this is an all-important question, right? This is not some homolytic, nice sermon to tickle your ears and to make you think, oh, wow, this is a really nice piece presented by this preacher. No, this is the Holy Spirit asking us all this morning. Are we serious about forgiving others? Do we really love other people? Because if we don't, guys, not only will we experience damnation here, it'll be an eternal damnation. I'd like for everybody to stand. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Pleasant words and soft smiles are not genuine forgiveness. Genuine forgiveness comes from the heart. We need another power. Like Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. Jesus is saying the same thing to you this morning. Come close to me. Lay down that grudge. Lay down that resentment. Lay down that bitterness, that hostility. And come to Jesus this morning. I want to invite you to come up front and pray. The altar is not a place of shame. This is not for us to point out and to say who sinned this week. The altar is a place of grace and mercy and compassion and forgiveness. Come forward this morning and pour your heart out to Jesus. I'll meet you down here. This is where I'm headed. Guys, this is not anything to please the eyes of other people. But ask yourselves this morning that honest question. Have you ever confessed the enormity of your sin and do you take forgiveness seriously. If you're holding anything in this moment, get down here to this altar and bow the knee and let it go and be forgiven. And when we walk out of here, let's be a people that forgives others. Why? Because we're disciples of Jesus Christ. And what do disciples of Jesus Christ do? They love one another. You may be down here. Let's pray. I know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know you, Lord. I can know a friend. I want to know you, Lord. So I'm laying down. Oh, my religion, I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. I'm laying down. Oh, my religion, I'm laying down. I want to know you, Lord. Lord, I've been told I don't measure up. Lord, I've been told I'm not good enough. But you're here with me. I reach out and you find me. Sin, no amount of untruth can separate us. I will rejoice in the simple 
gospel, I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. I will rejoice in you, Lord. You Lord, I will rejoice in you, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for all that we've done. And help us have the heart. Forgive us. Give us such trespass. Oh, no, we love like a friend. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. I will rejoice in you, Lord. I will rejoice in the simple gospel. the simple gospel Like I know a friend, I want to know you, Lord, oh, yes, I do. I want to know you, Lord, like I know a friend. I want to know you,
Jesus' name. All right, if you guys would, please stand. Uh, I just want to encourage you as you go out throughout this day and this week, um, walk in forgiveness, walk in love. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you so much for the great love you've shown towards us. Father, when we're all wretches and sinners and far off, you've brought us near. And so, Lord, that's the greatest miracle and gift of all is the call that you've placed upon our hearts and our lives. And, Lord, we thank you for cleaning us up and cleaning us off. And, Lord, thank you for the refreshing that has come when we've turned to you. And, Lord, as we go out of here, Father, allow us to be bold for you, to be bold ambassadors filled with love, Lord Jesus. Bless your people. Make your face shine upon your people and give them your peace. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. You are dismissed.